Hey viewers, today I'm going to show you how to bring new life to a vintage 10 speed bike. There's lots of 10 speeds lying around and uh, what I'm going to do is upgrade this to 14 speed. It currently has five uh, cogs on the back and two rings on the front and so I'm going to replace uh, the rear wheel with uh, another wheel that's going to have a 7 speed uh, free wheel on it. I'm going to upgrade the derailleur and uh, the shifter, this is the index shifting on there, and I'm also going to upgrade the, uh, the cables and cable housings as well. And I'm also going to replace the chain to, uh, to a skinnier chain to accommodate the uh, seven speed uh, freewheel and derailleur. Um, the, I'm going to stick with 27 inch wheels because it, it just makes things easier. I could go to uh, 700C wheels, but I'm going I'm to stick with uh, 27 inch wheels because I want to have them around here and I have a nice set of aluminum wheels uh, that are lighter than the steel rims here and uh, this is a six, has a, currently has a 6 speed free wheel on it but I'm going to swap this out with a 7 speed free wheel and this should work fine. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to start off by removing the wheel here, just get this out of the way here and pull that off like that and then I'm going to break the chain get this out of the way because I'm going to be replacing the chain with a skinnier chain here so I got my chain breaker here And I'm going to remove the derailleur here. This is an old Hurette uh, derailleur. So let me see. I got to pop off this little cap here. And then there's a uh, little uh, bolt in here. Move this. Now comes like the most difficult part of the whole operation. Um, I need to expand the rear triangle out. Now on a standard 10 speed frame, the width uh, from in, inside the dropouts here is going to be 120 millimeters. Um, that's, the, that's the normal, but on some uh, 10 speeds you'll find a little bit wider on Schwinn's. Schwinn hubs sometimes are a little bit wider than 120 millimeters and also on French hubs, uh, Normandy hubs, uh, this uh, they can be sometimes a little bit wider, like about 124 millimeters. Uh, the wheel that was on this had a Normandy hub, and so the spacing on here is actually about 124 millimeters. So, um, Ultimately, what I want to do to accommodate a wheel for a uh, six or seven speed freewheel hub is I need to expand the uh, rear triangle to 126 millimeters. So this is currently 124 millimeters. So I have like a caliper here. I can measure to the inside of the dropouts here and it's currently about 124 millimeters right there. So what I need to do is expand these out uh, two millimeters total. So that's not a huge distance. Um, from 120 to 126 is a little bit farther. Now, you only want to do this on a steel frame. Most 10 speeds you're going to find are going to be uh, steel frames anyway. Do not do this on an aluminum frame. Do not do this on a carbon fiber frame or titanium frame, only on a steel frame. But like I said, most 10 speed bikes are going to be steel frame anyway, so that's probably not gonna be an issue. If you're concerned, if you're, if you're not sure, touch a magnet to it. If the magnet sticks, then it's a steel frame. Now, before I get started on bending the rear triangle out, I wanna check to see if the, the frame is straight to begin with. So I have a uh, frame alignment gauge uh, from Park Tool. Uh, this is an FAG2. And what you do is you touch it to the head uh, tube up here, you touch it to the seat tube, and then there's a little adjustable part down here which will go down 
and you can adjust it so where it just touches the, uh, the rear dropout down here on the outside like that. And this is actually, it's about a millimeter spacing between the tip of this little blue part here and the dropout there. So now, I go to the other side and check it over here, and it should be the same, but it's not. There's a much wider gap over here. There's probably, I don't know, like I guess maybe four or five or six millimeters over here. So this one is actually out farther than this one. And I ultimately want these to be straight. Um, so this actually complicates things. I'd actually like to be able to push both out equally, but since this is already kind of out further than this one, I need to take this one and pull it out and hopefully even it up a little bit and get it to about the spacing where I want it to be. Now, if you're going to bend your frame on your bike, be aware you do it at your own risk. There is a risk involved in doing this. Uh, you could potentially uh, damage or break the frame, but uh, it's up to you. Uh, I've done this before, lots of people have done this. Um, this particular method is not my favorite method of doing this. I basically have a 2x4 going through underneath the, uh, the rear triangle here and on top of the, uh, the seat tooth there. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of push this down a little bit, and this is going to push this up. So I'm just going to kind of push down a little bit and try to get that to bend up there. And I need to bend it out a little bit farther than uh, two millimeters because it's going to bend out and bend back. So. I can try to get it to bend and then measure it. Okay, it looks like it's about 125 millimeters now, so I need to go a little bit farther. It'd be easier if I took the pedal off on the one side there. Okay, it looks like I got about 126 millimeters now. So now I'm going to measure the uh, uh, gap between the dropouts here. And it looks like it's about 126 millimeters, 126.2. But the actual judge is going to be whether the wheel will fit. So I got my wheel here. And it fits in between the dropouts. Perfect. So that's where I want that to be. And then I'm going to check the frame alignment here. Like this. This is about uh, where it was. There's actually looks like maybe about a two millimeter gap there. And then I'll check the other side. There's maybe about, looks maybe about like a three millimeter gap over there. So it's not perfect, but that's close enough. It's closer than where it was. Now, this is actually kind of an expensive tool. Um, you might be able to uh, go to a bike shop and have them, you know, borrow that. But another method here is if you take a piece of string, wrap it around the head tube, bring it down and go through the dropouts back here, um, nice and evenly there. You know, this got this hanger here, so you've got to get that out of the way. But have the, tri uh, the string kind of form a triangle from around the head tube back to the dropouts, and then measure from the string into the seat tube. There should be an even distance from the string to the seat tube on both sides if the frame is in alignment. 
Now you might be wondering why I used a 2x4 to uh, spread the chain stays um, when in a previous video I used a threaded rod. I actually like the threaded rod better. It, it spreads both sides uh, at the same time relatively even, uh, evenly and it's just, I think it's a little cleaner method. Um, but the 2x4 method allows you to spread one side at a time and in the case of this frame the chain stays were uneven to begin with. The frame wasn't straight. So I was able to move the one side out and the other side was already about where it should be. And so that's why I used that method instead. Now I wanna check the uh, alignment of the dropouts themselves. And so I have these, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, FFG2 frame and fork and alignment gauges. These were Park Tool. Again, these are kind of uh, not cheap tools. But the way this works is they clamp onto the dropouts here and then there's these little parts here that screw in. I want the flat parts of these to be parallel to each other and they're not. So what I can do is now bend the uh, dropouts to use these tools here to kind of uh, twist the dropouts so they're um, in alignment. You gotta use a little bit of muscle here to kind of bend them. Bend this. And then you come in, that's pretty close. Bit. And that looks pretty good right there. So now that the uh, the two dropouts are good in good uh, alignment with each other and they're nice and parallel, um, what happens is if they're not uh, parallel, then uh, it places a lot of stress on the uh, axle of the of the uh, the hub there because it'll be kind of maybe twisting a little bit, a little bit of pressure on there, and so you get these nice and straight. Everything's just going to work a little bit better there. Now I need to replace the derailleur hanger. Uh, this derailleur hanger is designed for a Hurette uh, derailleur, and I want to install a Shimano, so I need to. Just uh, remove this. Let me see here. What's the inside? Ah, there we go. Loosen that. I slide that right off. And I got a new derailleur hanger here. The bottom part here is different. This is designed for Shimano uh, derailleurs. It'll work with a lot of other derailleurs as well. Um, most current derailleurs, I think, use something like this anyway. So just tighten this on. And got that all set. And now I have a new Shimano derailleur. This is an RD 2300. It's a relatively cheap uh, derailleur. You can get them off of eBay. I think I paid a little over 10 bucks for this. And so I'm just gonna put this on. Even though this is a cheap derailleur, it's a current one. Uh, it's, it's actually compatible with eight speed. Um, even though I'm going to 7 speed, but this is still probably way better quality than the old vintage derailleur that was on there. Here's the wheel that I'm going to use. It's a 27 inch wheel. It currently has a 6 speed freewheel on it. I'm going to pull this off and install a uh, 7 speed freewheel on it. The uh, hub on a, a 6 or 7 speed wheel is a little wider than what's on a 5 speed wheel, so that's why we expanded the uh, chain stays there. So this looks like a Suntour, maybe it's a French or something, but it, it takes this type of uh, tool to remove it off of there. And whenever I use um, this type of tool where it has like the, the little uh, teeth in here like this, um, I usually use the uh, skewer to help hold the tool in place so that it doesn't just slip out of the 
uh, freewheel there and just skip. So I'll kind of tighten this skewer down, not quite all the way, but it's enough to hold that in there. I'll try it again here. Not sure if the socket's got quite enough to grab onto that uh, freewheel tool, but <clears throat> got it. And when I got break, broken loose, at that point I can pull the skewer off. And I should be able to just unscrew it with the tool by hand. Lift off there. There we go. Okay, with the, the freewheel off, I took the opportunity to clean off uh, everything in here, including the uh, spoke guard on there. I'm gonna leave the spoke guard on there. If the spoke guard's in good shape, I'll usually leave it on there. Uh, if it's broken, I'll pull it off. But the spoke guard can definitely save your spokes if the chain comes off of there, which occasionally happens. Uh, not necessarily through misadjustments. Sometimes you just hit a bump, maybe derailleur bends. And uh, I have a video on that. So I have a, a new seven speed uh, freewheel here. Before I put that on, I'm just gonna put a thin uh, bit of a grease just around the threads on the, the hub here. Just a very thin coating there, like that. And then I'll put the freewheel on. Start it on by hand and uh, spin it on, like that. And I've got the, this is Shimano, so I got a Shimano tool here, slide that in there like that. And then I'm just gonna tighten it on a little bit. I don't need to super crank it on because riding it will help tight, tight it on like that. And just put the skewer back on. Ready to go. I'm ready to install the wheel. Slide this on here. And then clamp it into place. Now one thing to keep an eye on when going from a six speed to a seven speed freewheel on a wheel is uh, keep an eye on the spacing um, between the small cog and the uh, dropout here. Um, it's possible, I'm gonna have to see when I put the chain on that I might have to put a spacer in there just to uh, put to space this out just a little bit, uh, maybe a millimeter or two. But, uh, so I'll see that when I, after I put the chain on. Now I did this in a separate video I uh, upgraded the shifters from the original Hurette uh, sh down tube shifters to Shimano indexed shifters, these seven speed. And uh, I modified the clamp here. If you click the link on, uh, on the screen there, uh, you can go see th that video. I just thought it might make a better standalone video on its own. Now before I install the chain, I want to uh, roughly install the shifter cables because um, I'm gonna need to size the chain and so I'm going to need, be able to uh, need to move the derailleur uh, back and forth on the, the cogs here in order to uh, get the right size. So I'm going to cut a new piece of uh, cable housing for right here. And I want to kind of get it uh, roughly uh, like this. And got my park tool cable housing cutters here. So just cut that. Like that. Then I'll use a skewer to help open up the lining uh, at the end of the cable there, because it kind of gets munched down uh, when you cut the cable. And then I want to put ferrules at each end of the cable housing. Uh, if a ferrule will fit in a cable stop, and oh, it won't won't fit in that one, so I won't use a cable or a ferrule on that end. And we'll see if a ferrule will fit. And a ferrule will fit in this side. So if a ferrule will fit, use it. If it won't fit, don't use it. It's basically, that's the rule. So it'll be like that. Okay, I'm ready to install, start installing the cable. So I'm gonna run it through the shifter first. I'm gonna do the back, uh, back uh, cable first, the rear derailleur. Now on a lot of bikes, the cable goes on the bottom side of the 
bottom bracket and there's a guide down there but this one actually has like a guide on the top here and it's just like a little metal tube but I'm gonna put like a little uh, bit of liner on there so I'm gonna slide this onto the cable first slide the cable through here pull this through and I'm get this little bit of liner like just right in there and that'll kind of help uh, it's go smoothly through that little metal part there then I'm going to run the cable through the cable stop here into the cable housing and push that in through there Through the other end of the cable housing. Now I'm going to install the cable into the cable clamp on the rear derailleur here. Uh, let me see, get that slid into place here. Then tighten it down. And I want to try to get this cable kind of pulled as tightly as I can here. Um, to start off with and I'm just rough adjusting at this at this point because I'm gonna have to spend some time uh, fine-tuning the adjustment on this but this will hopefully allow me to uh, adjust the chain and then I'm gonna cut off the uh, the cable here I'm gonna leave uh, I don't know, five six inches here to be uh, right now though I'm gonna cut a lot more off later but this will give me some uh, room to work with later And I'm going to keep the front derailleur on here. This should work just fine. Um, I'm going to replace this little bit of cable housing here with a brand new piece. Okay, got a brand new piece of cable here. And let's see if and a, ferrules aren't going to fit on either end. So I'll just put this cable in there, uh, cable housing in there without any uh, ferrules. So I'll run the cable down through the left shifter here like that get fully seated through the cable stop into the cable housing like that just like that up through this cable stop And then there's a little hole in the screw here that the cable goes through. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. That up through there. Then I'm going to pull the cable tight and then tighten this little screw here this little nut and clamp this down on the cable and I'm going to have to do some more adjusting on this later on so now I'm going to cut off some cable again I'm going to leave uh, four or five inches here well, about four inches leave that on there uh, give me room to play with later on now I have to size a, a brand new bike chain. This is a seven speed compatible uh, chain. I have it looped onto the small chain ring in the front and on the small cog in the back and through the derailleur. And I have like a little piece of wire hanger here kind of holding it together. At this point I want to look at the rear derailleur here. Um, I want to make sure that the chain is not kind of coming up and rubbing on like the pulley here in which case that the, uh, the chain would be too long. Uh, but this is actually pretty good, um, so this is, uh, I don't need to take any links out at this point. Now I need to check it on the uh, big ring and the big cog to check to see how far the derailleur goes. Now I have the chain on the big ring and the big cog, and what I want to look at is the rear derailleur here. I want to make sure that the uh, chain still wraps and curves around both derailleurs. That I, what I don't want to see is 
this thing just fully extended in the chain basically in a straight line through there. So this is actually good on both ends. I still have plenty of room on uh, both uh, chain um, gearing configurations. In real life, you wouldn't actually want to be in either one of these uh, gearing combinations from the uh, big, big or small, small uh, that calls it cross training. Uh, cross training. Um, so, but you want to check these uh, for checking the chain size. I actually have a video out there on sizing a bike chain that goes in more depth uh, than this. Okay, I'm ready to uh, join the two ends of the, the uh, chain together. I'm using what's called Easy Link, which is basically two halves of uh, like the two outer plates here, and you just kind of put them through there. They get the little rivets connected, and then they lock into place. And so now the chain is nice and connected. Now that I have the chain on, now I need to adjust the rear derailleur here. I can check it as is. So I have it shifted all the way down. I'll shift it up one notch, it doesn't shift up. Shift it up one more notch, it goes up. One more notch, it goes up. So it's not quite off, or quite on there. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna tighten this uh, cable just a little bit. Let me see, I'm gonna tighten this barrel adjuster all the way in, then put it out, eh, about a turn and a half. Loosen the uh, cable clamp here. A little bit. Pull the cable as tight as I can here. And then uh, tighten down the, uh, the clamp again. So now I'm going to go ahead and check the shifting. So it's in the first gear or the smallest cog. One notch goes up. 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 And then I'm gonna shift it all the way down. So again, down, up, up, up. That actually looks pretty close as is. So I'm going to tighten this down like that. I'm going to trim the cable down to about an inch, inch and a half here like that. I'm going to use like a little uh, crimp end here. Just slides right on like that. Crimp this on like that and then just make sure that this is tight on there and then just double check the whole thing yep it's pretty close I'm gonna go out just a little bit there let's see here It's something that might need some uh, fine tuning, but that, that is, that's normally the case anyway. Now I need to ch uh, check the shifting on the front derailleur. So it's in the small gear there. Go up, down, go up. Let's see if I can try to push it a little bit off. If I go up, down. That actually looks pretty good. So I want to make sure that it doesn't like come too far. I might need to adjust the uh, limiting screws here. But this looks pretty good because this was already adjusted for the uh, previous chain and everything like that. But this seems to be working pretty well. So there. Now just clip this, leave about an inch, inch and a half on there. Put a crimp end on. Like that. Done with that. Well, all done with that. Um, and it's working pretty well. Shifting, shifting. I might need to do, still do a little bit of fine tuning on the rear derailleur there. There's still more work to be done on the bike, uh, replacing the brake levers, just cleaning up and everything like that. But uh, 
Anyway, I hope you found that useful or interesting. If you did, please click like on the video. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos. It helps me out. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button and you'll see new videos that come out. And I'm always coming out with new videos. Whatever I find interesting or run into, useful. Uh, and uh, I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.